being a, a senior citizen and able to uh, uh, to get into affordable senior citizen house for senior citizen, Jan Prairie, I want to take my hat off to her. I'm just very proud of her, and uh, I couldn't go I couldn't go on without mentioning her name for uh, her and Mayor, Mayor uh, uh, Garcetti. He's a veteran like I am. He came and visited me here. And so they gave me the nickname, the mayor of the Dunbar. So I'm very proud to carry that name. And I'm trying to do my best uh, to show off the Dunbar, to tell the history of the Dunbar. Dr. Somerville and his wife, the first dentist, black dentist that graduated from USC, when they built this in 1928, it was called the Somerville. But after the, the, uh, the stock market in 1929 fell, something happened where uh, Mr. Somerville and his wife, they sold it. And it went through different names, but they named it uh, after this port called Lawrence Dunbar. Certain places blacks had to stay at. Uh, they could come here and perform in Beverly Hills and Santa Monica, Culver City, but they couldn't get rooms after they performed. They had to come here and they were welcome at the Dunbar. That's why the Dunbar was built for people of color, not only black, but people of color. It could be anybody. If it was back in the day and Pancho Sanchez was living, he would come here, or Tito Puente, they would come here and stay here at the historic Jazz Hotel. And like you was asking me, uh, why did I uh, choose the Dunbar? I just knew that this was history right here. And if, if my application go through um, as a senior citizen, they start at 55 now if anybody want to know. That's what they call an active senior citizen at 55. When I came here, I wasn't 55. I think I was 59 years old. I came here uh, in 2014 when they rebuilt everything before what they were doing construction. They didn't tear everything down. They just worked around it, you know. There hasn't been a sit down restaurant on Central for like 30 plus years. Mm. So I'm like, yeah. it's all fast food. Yeah, it's, it's all food. like quick coming. It's a food out. desert. Um, being at the Dunbar has been great because I think we've been really accepted by the community. Um, you know, even through the pandemic and all, we had people who were still coming out to support. Even with two through takeout, we were able to participate in a few senior meal programs. Um, so uh, right now that everything's coming back, I think um, I just love the fact that people come in and like, oh, I remember my aunt or my grandma, my grandpa, they used to come and party in this area. So hearing the stories are great. It was like they have such an attachment to the community. I was like, they're able to kind of reminisce a little bit on what, what history that they had in their own families. So I think that's been very special to this location. The owners of the building were looking for a soul food restaurant. So they wanted to find, and they went out and found different restaurants, um, you know, and we were one of the ones approached. Many of the bigger names maybe turned it down because it is a hard ask. This community has a rich history with the African-American community, jazz, it has a, but the community has also changed. It's no longer the same. We're now like probably 80 to 90% Latino, it is, um, as much as you want to preserve the history, some of the community has switched through other years. But um, I still think there is something great about keeping that history. And, you know, for one, we try to like bring live jazz on Sundays. So it's, you know, it's a little thing so that we can do to bring a little bit of the history here. But, you know, our food is both soul food and Mexican. It's a little fusion because I think it, it merits the, the fusion of the community and what it is and what it is now.